Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. And it's happened. Graham Potter has been sacked by Chelsea. Todd Bowley and Egg Barley taking that decision on t Sunday evening tonight around eight o'clock. The club statement going out. Graham Potter has been dismissed as Chelsea manager after a terrible, terrible run of results. Uh, Bruno Salter, former Brighton defender and assistant, will take charge until a new manager is appointed. Um, he'll definitely be in charge for Liverpool. It depends how long it takes the club to appoint a new manager as to whether he'll be in charge for Wolves at the weekend uh, or not. But yeah, massive news. I don't think... I mean, it's interesting because, you know, the, the noise coming out of the club this morning was that everything was business as usual and that Graham Potter would be in charge for the Liverpool game on Tuesday and that even invites had been sent out for his press conference to take place tomorrow lunchtime. But it's obviously moved very quickly. Uh, reportedly, he was sacked at 3 p.m., this afternoon, they took that decision. Um, and then the players also didn't find out until the whole world found out. And supposedly the reason for that was they didn't want any leaks coming of this news. Um, so Graham Potter has been sacked. Uh, my initial reaction is one of kind of, I don't, I don't want to say relief, because I think that would be a little bit disrespectful, but kind of just relief in terms of the fact that you don't have to have this discourse around Potter anymore. We don't have to discuss, will he or won't he be here? Or why hasn't he gone? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? He's now gone. So it's a massive weight, I think, off the club's shoulders, off the fans' shoulders, maybe off the players' shoulders as well. Ultimately, I think, look, it's not worked out for him. I, th I think he's a lovely guy. Um, you know, he comes across well. Um, and he and he is a good coach. Look, he's not shown it at Chelsea particularly, but, you know, he is a good coach. And I just think this opportunity has come too soon for him. The job was too big for him. Um, and But from his perspective, you just don't say no to an opportunity like this. So I can fully understand why he took it on. In terms of how he's done, I think it's been difficult for him. It's been really tough for him. You know, he inherited the job in September, um, you know, parachuted into a bit of a mess. Too cool. Back end of his reign didn't go well. All sorts going on. Um, kind of a disjointed squad. And we started reasonably well, you know. I think we were unbeaten in the first nine games. Had some great wins under our belt in the Champions League as well, some good wins in the league. And then realistically, as soon as we got hammered 4-1 at Brighton, the wheels kind of came off from there. We we didn't really, we didn't win too many more games. Ultimately, you know, his inability to get a tune out of these players, any tactics, any tactical nows, any clear patterns of play, there was just nothing. You know, there, were the, there was the odd game here or there where we looked pretty good against Dortmund. We were very good. But, you know, ultimately, he just hasn't been able to get a reaction out of these players um, and get them to perform. Now, you know, you can point to circumstances like that. The fact that, you know, he didn't have the summer window or, or a pre-season. You can point to the, the key injuries to, to the likes of Reese James and Ben Chilwell, to name a few, and Golo Kante as well. You know, we had a massive injury list. All these things haven't helped him. The fact that, you know, you know, yes, you might look from the outside and think, oh, it's an absolute dream to be, to be blessed with, you know, £300 million worth of signings in January. But that that creates its own problems as well. It's very hard to bed players and it's even harder to bed players in mid-season. And, you know, it leaves you with a massively oversized squad and you're trying to keep all these players happy. But, and that and that's a really difficult ask. But I think one what is clear is that it just wasn't working. Whatever was going on at the training ground, whatever his ideas were, they just weren't getting across. And I think another thing that massively counted against him as well was just... How he can, how he spoke in the press. He just didn't speak like a Chelsea manager, you know. Um, and yes, that 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 is a thing, you know. There's a certain way when you're at top clubs how you conduct yourself, and he just didn't conduct it, you know. It's always way too much praise for the opposition, you know. Things that we've got to accept the points, you know. We we gave, we get the boys gave everything. I mean, look, they may well have done, but that's not what you want to hear after a game when you've lost and you've been poor, you know. You've got to just be a bit more. You know, you've got to be a, have a bit more about you uh, when, when, when you're speaking after games where you've not played well, and be a bit more honest and have, have reflect on the situation in in a more in a more honest way. And he just didn't do that. It was very, it was very relaxed. It was almost quite blasé, uh, in, in in my opinion, how 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 that went down. Um, and that's that's counted against him as well. I I don't really think he truly ever won the fans over or ever connected with the fans. I think a lot of people saw the appointment in the first place as, as a wrong choice, weren't really sure how it was going to go. Um, a very un-Chelsea-like appointment. We've never appointed anyone like Graham Potter before. We were never going to, we would never have appointed him under under um, Roman Abramovich for sure, because we always went for, for tried and tested. Um, and yeah, it, I think it's a shame. It's always sad when someone loses their job, like football aside, you know, it's, it's a family man, he's a dad. 
Um, you know, he's got a wife to go home to. He's got a family life to go home to. You know, it, it's tough. It's tough at the top being a football manager. It really is. And, you know, I, I do wish him well for the future, but it just hasn't worked out at Chelsea. It's just, it's just not been good enough. And he was just out of his depth. I think it was clear from the off that he was out of his depth. Um, you know, there wasn't, he just, yeah, it, it just wasn't there. The appointment was just totally wrong in the first place. And I, I admire the fact that the owners kind of come in. I think they've done a lot of things well. Um, some things not so well. This appointment, again, obviously it's great. To, it's easy to look back on and now say it was a complete disaster and it, and it was the wrong thing to do. But I think at the time when you've got an idea to, to have a long-term manager to build a, a quote-unquote project that, you know, Potter was kind of the, the best guy available at the time, you know, he'd shown a very good track record at Brighton. And, you know, you can argue whether that's enough to get the Chelsea job or not. There wasn't really any, any other candidates. You know, Pochettino and Zidane were available at the time. Um, and a lot of Chelsea fans, myself included, not hugely endorsing of, of, of them to come in and take the job. So, yeah, it was kind of the go-to, the, the kind of the obvious choice, I suppose, uh, when, when, you, when you look at it. But, yeah. It just hasn't worked out. The football's been dreadful. And, you know, a part of me was thinking after the game yesterday, you know, let's just give it to the end of the season. I mean, what, what are we gonna what are we gonna lose by giving it another 10 games? That was my thoughts before the game yesterday. The fact that we lost again, you think we're 11th now on the table. Like you think, oh, how much worse can it get? I actually think it probably could have got worse. We've got a lot of tough games coming up. Um, the only thing that's saving our season right now is those Champions League games. So whoever comes in needs to be instilled, in my opinion for the first leg at the Bernabeu, if that, if that, like, if that's possible. Um, but for Potter, yeah, just a disaster from the off, really. I feel like his best football came right at the start of his reign, that those first nine games when we were unbeaten, we had some good nights in the Champions League as well. I mean, he did very well in that. Um, but ultimately, just, just not good enough at this level. Simple as that. He just didn't have what was required to be a Chelsea manager. And the results just weren't good enough. You know, it's relegation form, if, if, if we're being real. It really is. I think it's three wins in our last 10 matches in the league. And by all accounts, that run of three wins, uh, that, that run of th kind of four games unbeaten, the, the Leeds, the Dortmunds, the Leicester and the Everton, that was, that just bought them a little bit of time. And it would have taken a, a miraculous recovery to kind of turn that one round. But yeah, as I've said, I've said it a number of times now. I was kind of feel like I'm repeating myself. Not good enough. Simple as that. Just wasn't good enough. Not the man for the job. And you look at it and you think, right, okay, massive pressures on the owners now because we've spent £21.5 million to get Graham Potter out of Brighton. £12 million a year contract, five years, £60 million investment. And you spent £300 million on players for him and you've chucked it all away after eight months. This, this is a very Chelsea thing to do. This next appointment is absolutely crucial. This has to be right for people to maintain trust in the owners. It looks like the number one target is Julian Nagelsmann. Um, recently sat by Bayern Munich. So let's kind of see what happens with that one. Things are moving quickly. Maybe he'll be in place for Wolves at the weekend. Who knows? But that seems to be the guy that Chelsea are looking towards in terms of Nagelsmann. I think, yeah, good manager. But again, not perfect. Has his deficiencies. Will go through a tough, tough periods at Chelsea. And I think right now as fans, we have to accept that whoever comes in, it's going, there's, no, there's no outstanding candidate. There's no one that's perfect, but we have to be patient and accept that we're going to go through, maybe not perhaps as bad as what's happened under Potter, but we will go through bad runs of form that, that we can't just keep calling for the manager to be replaced. So when Nilesman does come in, if it had, is to be him, there needs to be an acceptance, right? This is him. Give him the keys. Give him a few seats. Give him seasons to, 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 to do what he needs to do. And only then can we start to judge someone because I do... I. I want us to move away from this hiring and firing and we're in danger of kind of slipping back back into it again. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on the situation. Ultimately, it's always sad when someone loses their job, but Graham Potter just wasn't cut out for the Chelsea job. He wasn't the man. He didn't conduct himself like a Chelsea manager. He couldn't get the results on the pitch from a, a group of players that are exceptional, even though the performances didn't show it. And he's been relieved of his duty. So there we go. Bruno Salter will be in charge of Liverpool, guys. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the sacking. Make sure you smash the likes. Make sure you subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV. Leave your thoughts in the comments and catch you again soon.